Praise God. You may be seated in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in God's house with God's people to rejoice together. Amen. We just keep on trusting in God to bring souls. Amen. Let the word of God increase and let God add to the church. Amen. And teach men to call upon Jesus. Amen. The name of the Lord. That they may be saved. Amen. And receive salvation for their souls. But you know, when folks get saved, they'll come to church. When folks get saved, well, they'll, they'll get right in. Amen. Amen. They'll get right in. Yes, they will. They'll, they'll get in the boat. But not only just getting, just getting in the boat, amen, they might just step out like uh, the rest of us, stepping out by faith. It's time to get out of the boat, amen, and walk on the waters, amen. It's time to, to really step out by faith to get to Jesus, amen, to do what we got to do to get to the Lord, amen. And so what has to be done must be done, amen, for us to get there. That's what I said. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, amen. Amen. How many of you want to make it for God? You read your Bible, you pray, amen, you stay in church, you'll make it, my friend, not by works, but by your faith. You keep having faith in God and getting stronger and adding to your faith, amen, amen, but God bless you is our prayer, enough of that, I'm not preaching, amen, I gotta calm down, let's bring it, let's tone, tone it down, sometimes I can go to, from zero to a hundred, can't do that the whole service. Got to slow it down, bring it back. Amen. And we're going to wait upon you to give what God has laid upon your heart. Amen. If you've been blessed by this ministry, God has blessed you spiritually and you want to give. Amen. As unto the Lord to support the work here in Bremerton. Why don't you go ahead and click that link that's in the comment section and it'll take you to our main website where you can give from there. And we're so thankful for your support. Amen. All Christians pay tithe and giving an offering is unto the Lord. Amen. Reverend Robert, sir, if you'd pray.
praise him tonight. His love oh, his love endures forever. forever. God loves you with an everlasting love, love tonight. Come on, praise him tonight. He's worthy, isn't he? Yes, his Come on. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. Yes, his love endures forever. His love endures forever. Love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Forever, God is faithful. Forever, God is If he, since he's forever faithful, he, ha, he should have a forever thankful people for his faithfulness. Amen. That means God will never fail us. God will always be there. Amen. He, he's a way maker tonight, isn't he? Amen. Praise God. Ew. I need some coffee. Normally I got Reverend Phillips here. Be pray for, for his travels. But... Normally, Reverend Phillips giving me some coffee, but there's a there's a sticker that's on our car outside, and it says "Powered by Jesus." So even though I really want some coffee tonight, Amen. With the preaching and the help of God's word, Amen. I got to be powered by Jesus, Amen. I mean, I got to be powered by Jesus tonight, Amen. How many are powered by Jesus? Amen. He said, oh, yeah, tear ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Amen. Come on. I got some folks in church tonight. Y'all all right? All right. Brother Kelby, sir, won't you stand and pray? Amen. Amen. Preaching for about three minutes tonight. Not really. <laughs> Three-minute sermon. In the book of Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah chapter 6, starting at verse 16, or I actually only got verse 16, said, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. And just for a little while, I'd like to preach a message entitled, God is always right. Amen? God is always right. Amen? God is always right. And it really takes maturity and really growing in God and having a relationship with God to really just come to this conclusion like, God, you were always right. And what you said from the beginning was true and just. And even God himself has not turned from what he said from the beginning. Amen. Because what he said in the beginning was the way. Amen. God didn't think of another way. Amen. After uh, it was still the way. It was perfect. When God gave an answer, this was the way and we just had to walk in it and trust him amen but we're dealing with the people here tonight well not hitting here tonight but in our bible reading that jeremiah who's a prophet of the lord is talking to these people who had walked away from god talking about the children of israel he's this man speaking to his own brethren amen well really the lord is speaking through this man talking to the children of israel saying stand ye in the ways and see 
and ask for the old paths, wherein is the good way. Amen. God has not changed his mind. Amen. God is always going to call us to repentance when we begin to swerve, when we go our own way, when we don't desire to apply his word anymore, but then everything just falls apart in our life. Amen. Because we built our house upon the sand, and when it all crumbles and we begin to call out to God, you know what God's going to say? Won't you just come back to the old ways? Won't you come back to the very word that I spoke to you from the beginning. Amen. And it caused you to live right. It caused you to love my ways. It caused you to have a blessed life. Amen. Because what God said is what God said. And when God said it, it was perfect. There was no alterations needed to be made. Amen. And God's just going to call us to repentance. Amen. Amen. Call us back. He said, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. Isn't it kind of funny how, man, we're just living in sin, and then we heard a preacher preach, amen, in the gospel, amen, and the truth of the love of God was made manifest unto us, amen, and we ran to God every moment. We were crying at the altar, talking about weeping and gnashing of teeth and snotting over at the altar. They had to come up and clean up after you because you drooled all over the place trying to get to God, amen. But anyway, forget all of that. But, but you know, we grow, and we're growing, and we're growing, and then we get to this, like, little area or dispensation in our life for this this little little part where we just for some odd reason get so relaxed in our Christianity and we kind of stop trusting in God we kind of stop really praying and relying on God because now we're so blessed and it's like and sometimes in our mind it's like when we're so blessed we believe it's us the reason why we're blessed and why we have what we have so then we begin to look at ourselves and forget God then we start having our own ideas having our own ways, and then when things really start falling apart, we're like, man, what happened? What happened? And then we start reading the Bible, and as we read more and read more, we begin to realize, you know what? I began to put myself before God, my desires before God. I'm sorry, God, I did get caught up. I got caught up in my own ability, God. I got caught up in trusting in myself. Amen. And God's not going to destroy you. Amen. God is not going to just cast you down and throw you away. God's just going to say, well, I'm glad you've acknowledged it. Because now you, all you got to do, amen, is come back to the ways Amen. Uh, that you walked in when you first got saved, because when you got saved, you had rest for your souls. Amen. When you got saved, you had peace in your heart. There was no war or envy or jealousy going on in your heart no more. He said, my word gave you peace. The Bible said he sent his word and it healed them. God changed our life. Amen. And renewed us. Amen. And we were strengthened by the Lord. But then we, you know, had our little moment. Things fell apart. And now God is just like, won't you come back and walk in my ways? Let go of your ideologies. Let go of your ways. Amen. Because your ways aren't giving you peace. Your ideas aren't giving you rest for your soul. God said, let my way, because my way is true. Amen. Now, Yahweh doesn't mean like y'all's way. It's God. Y'all way. No. They ain't talk about y'all. God is not with y'all way. Okay. God is with God. Amen. And God knows what's best for us because he manufactured us. Amen. And since he manufactured us, when we error, you know, just like if your phone starts malfunctioning, going on kind of stuff, didn't the manufacturer send you a manual? Didn't he send you thing? You can only restart and do this. That's how God is. It's like the Bible's our manual. Amen. I, I, something's going on in my life. I'm erring. I mean, you, you go back into the manual. And James here, like, cleans your heart, you sinner. <laughs> no, <I'm> just playing. <laughs> Amen. Boy, let me tell you, James, you just read James and you keep praying and reading James. Boy, you, you see how serious that man is. But anyway, the whole word of God is serious. But y'all know what I mean. James didn't. It's like James wouldn't put the belt away. You know, some parents put the belt away. 
James wouldn't put the belt away. He just the whole letter. <laughs> that man kept his belt out. Anyway, but listen. He said, you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Jeremiah was dealing with the people that had walked away from God, but not just walking away from God, they began to turn to other gods. In Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 18, it said the, the, the children gathered wood and the fathers kindled the fire and the women look, need the dough, look, listen to this, to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. He said, do they not provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? These people, these, these, uh, they became a people when they would turn away from God and things begin to fall apart. You know, they are confused in their faces on why life is the way that they are. They're confused now. Why, why you got a, a confused face? Because things are falling apart. You're trying to figure out why it's falling apart. <laughs> God said, uh, have they not provoked themselves to the confusion of their own faces? They're confused in their face on why life is the way that it is. And these were a people. This is what provoked God to anger. Because these became a people. The Jews became a people, a stiff-necked people who would rather stay in denial than to believe that walking away from God is the reason why things are the way that they are. Even though they walked away from God, provoked God to anger, and now they're serving other gods, and then when their life falls apart, they're confused in their faces, trying to figure out what's going on and why it's going on, but at the same time, they're in denial and would do, and still don't believe that it's because they walked away from God. Like, oh, that, ha that has to be the last reason why my life's messed up is I walked away from God. No, that's the very first reason. That's where you messed up. You walked away from God. How does the creation walk away from God and still walk in the perfection that he created them in? You can't do that. You walked away from him. Boy, we all need a spiritual reboot. Amen? All right. This provoked God to anger because they were a people who knew the love of God. They saw God deliver them from the land of Egypt. They saw the miracles. God fed them. Amen. From manna from heaven. God, they, they drunk water out of a rock. They saw the moving hand of God. They saw the miracles. They saw the deliverance from their enemies. And they knew him to be the true and the living God. But they still walked after other gods anyway. In Jeremiah chapter 2, he said, Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and are become vain? God is like, what iniquity, what sin, what hate did you find in my heart? Amen. That you'd turn away from me after I was espoused unto you, after I've shown you my love. God is saying, why would you walk away from me? What hurt have I brought to your life? Amen. When I blessed you, and I gave you a land flowing with milk and honey. Amen. He said, I gave you the earth's best amen i gave you amen the desires of your heart but you still desire to provoke me to anger by turning away from my ways amen when my ways are perfect when my ways are true when my ways are just and they're turned under idols and god tried to have a discourse with them to even explain to them even the hands of these idol makers he said these idol makers they're vain men themselves they're defiled men themselves crafting up god out of the fire and out of wood amen they're not even right and clean in their own hearts and yet they're crafting a god that you're worshiping but he's like i'm not a god made by human hands i'm the beginning and the end i'm the first and the last i'm before all things and by me all things consist so we ought to turn back to god we ought to reverence god because he's our creator we didn't create ourselves amen he is our love amen 
But God said, if I'm your love, why'd you turn from me? It's kind of like what Jesus said to that church. Amen. That church in the book of Revelation. He said, you've done all these things. You you hate the Nicolaitans and their doctrine. And you called out false prophets. You did all of this and you do all of this. But he said, thou hast left thy first love. You've left your first love. Won't you come back to really loving me? Amen. You're so busy for the kingdom that you don't have time for the king. Amen. But we got to, amen, rest our souls at the feet of the king. Amen. And say, Jesus, I love you. I have a fixed gaze upon you. Amen. Because the Bible said, look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. But these were a people that provoked God to anger, turning to their own ways, walking after uh, the imagination of their own hearts, and they turned to other gods. And he said, what iniquity have you found in me? What did I do to you for you to leave me? There's no fault in me, God is saying. But he says when they left, they walked after vanity. Let me tell you, when you walk away from God, you're going to walk after vain things. You're going to destroy yourself. You're going to become self-destructive. And that's why we love to walk in the old paths. Amen. We love to walk in the old paths. Amen. This younger generation, we ought to learn from the older folks. Amen. I'm reminded of, of some people I got in my life. Amen. They said, well, I'm old school. And I say, you know what? I agree with the old school. Amen. Because I don't know what the new school is doing. You know, I don't. Now, I still believe the new school can beat the old school in basketball now. We can go there. But as far as decisions and the way things are happening, I'm going to go with the old school. You know, no offense. There's some old school that can still play, but they can't beat me. No, they can't. Come on, try me. Nah, just joking. Just jokes. We got to lighten up. Amen? We got to lighten up. All right. Let's have church. Amen? God wants us to trust him. How many of you know that? God wants you to trust him. The Bible said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. He said, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. Do you got that much trust in God to go to him about everything? Go to him about a wife. Go to him about a car. Go to him about finances. Amen. We could struggle in these areas, amen, with really going to God and we could rely upon ourselves. It happens, but God really wants us to talk to him. God wants us to trust in him. God wants to weigh us to wait upon him, amen, in the areas that you're weak. He wants to make you strong, amen. If you're weighed upon the Lord, he'll renew your strength. But he said, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Someone say amen. We bring harm on ourselves when we choose not to go God's way. Let me read that again. We bring harm on ourselves, upon ourselves, when we choose not to go God's way, but to handle things our own way and begin to think for ourselves. But that's when we get around the wrong crowd. And then we begin to have ungodly responses to difficult situations. And God wants us to stay blessed and fruitful. God wants us to stay blessed and fruitful. But when we walk away from him, amen, we start to take upon our old nature. Where we responded in ungodly ways when we lashed out at people, when we had road rage. But God wants us to be blessed, amen? God wants us to be blessed. But the further you get away from God, you'll get closer to the wrong crowd. The wrong crowd that makes bad decisions. The wrong crowd that makes decisions against the Bible. Against the ways of God. And now they're causing you to be tempted Amen. To turn your heart away from the word of God and an application of the word of God. Amen. It's true. When you get away from God, you're going to go to people who don't believe in him, who don't trust in him. 
who don't practice his ways. And that's why I really believe God wanted Abraham to get away. He said, get out of your father's house. Get out of the land. Amen. I want to bring you to a place. Amen. And God taught Abraham his, his ways. God gave Abraham his promises. But if Abraham dwelt where he was and probably told him like, hey, dad, God told me this and told me that and told me that and told me this, his dad would be like, boy. And he'd probably had family members arguing with the mind that God was trying to give Abraham. Because God's mind was not in the earth. Every man walked after the pattern of their own ways, fulfilling the desires of their own heart. And God was not in it. And here God is calling a man saying, I got a Messiah coming into the world. And he's going to be in your loins, Abraham. And all nations of the earth shall be blessed. But I want to teach you my ways. I want to spend a little bit of time with you, Abraham. I want you to trust in me. Amen. And I want you to be the father of many nations. Amen. Of the nations of the earth, they shall be blessed. But God wants us to be a blessed people. Amen. He said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Now, that don't mean you stick your lips out the window, you know, like Daniel, pray to your lips crust up. It's not, you know, really what it's saying. But when you meditate, it's because throughout your day, you make a lot of decisions, don't you? Throughout your day, you're making a lot of decisions. Decisions for the day and decisions for tomorrow, whatever they may be. Amen. The word of God keeps us from bad decisions. Amen. When we meditate upon the word of God. Amen. And when we have an encounter with somebody or whatever it may be, the word of God is in our hearts. Amen. The word of God is in our hearts. Amen. And David, King David, was so thankful for the word of God in his heart so that he wouldn't sin against God. Amen. But we need the word of God in our hearts so that when we are reproved by people, when we are, 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 are people are attacking you because of your faith, God's word is working in you so that you can give the right response. Because in your old life, when people attacked you, you would say the wrong things. Amen. You'd say the wrong things, and it turns into a fist fight. And I believe it says in Proverbs that your mouth has brought upon you a beating. <laughs> Your mouth got you beat up. (laughs) But listen, God helps us respond differently. His word is working in us. His ways are working in us. Amen. His ways are working in us. I mean, you're trusting in God tonight. But God wants us to be blessed. So blessed that he says that as you delight in the law of the Lord and you meditate on it, you're meditating on the ways of God and applying them to your life. He said he shall be planted like a he he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Amen. And bringing forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper, shall prosper. But let's back up. He said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Let's just reverse it. The man is not blessed if he's walking in the counsel of the ungodly. You are not blessed when you stand in the way of sinners. You will not be blessed when you sit in the seat of the scornful. Because all of these people or these groups with this behavior rebel against God and when you rebel against God as Jeremiah is trying to tell his people you're bringing a harm upon yourself you're destroying yourself you're bringing judgment upon yourself won't you come back to the old ways 
want you to come back to the ways of God, amen, when God had issued the law out of the mouth of Moses, amen, and we received it, amen, and, and just reading the Psalms of how David said, God, I love your statutes. God, I want your commandments living within me. God, I want to follow you. God, teach me your ways, amen, and we needed to fall in love with the word of God, and, and right here, he, he wants us to stay blessed by delighting in his law which has not changed. God has not changed his mind. So it's time, as Jeremiah said, ask for the old paths. Many people, they grew up in church, whether if it was Baptist, Mormon, this, Baptist, something, this, something, denomination, whatever they were in. But then 10 years later, five years later, or whatever it may be, they find themselves not in church. Maybe even going once a Sunday, and then, you know, then they're not going at all, or they just go on Christmas, Easter, and Thanksgiving. Like the Bible said, their God is their belly. They just come and fill their bellies on the day there's food. That's really not the interpretation. I just threw that in there. But they're really not living for God anymore. And then once their life comes to an end, or it feels like things are just crashing down. And they say, you know what? My life was prosperous when I really was giving my life to God, when I was going to church, when I was really reading my Bible and praying, when I was, you know. And God is just telling every last one like he told Jacob. Jacob, get back to Bethel. Jacob, won't you get back to Bethel? Amen. Won't you get back to the place where I was blessing your life? Amen. Where you were so blessed. Amen. Won't you get back to the house of God? Amen. And that's where I believe many people are going to come back to the house of God. Amen. As 2020 has brought distress and heartache upon many. And when things come to an end, it's so to speak in their life, they're going to look around like, man, what's going on? Man was doing this and what's going on with this? And they can maybe look to the heavens and call upon the name of the Lord so that they can be delivered out of this situation and say, you know what? As for me and my house, we're going to go to church this Sunday. We're going to hear the word. We're going to let God put things back together again. We're going to trust in him again. I'm going to put my house in order. Amen. That's when things really are cooking in the heart of a soul, in the heart and the soul of a person when they're like, I'm going to get my house in order. We're going to clean up some things around here and we're going to lay down the law of the Lord. Amen. Come on, won't you pray tonight? Come on, won't you see God? God is saying, won't you come back to me? You walked away from me. Now, uh, now you're all confused in the face trying to figure out what's going on. Don't be in denial, my friend. It's because you walked away from God. Amen. But God here is crying out to you just like he cried out to Adam. Amen. When Adam fled from the presence of God and he began to hide and God said, Adam, where art thou? Where art thou? Uh, where art thou, Adam? Amen. And God is crying for you saying, where are you? Won't you come out from hiding? Because he loves you. He wants to reconcile you back unto himself. But he says, just apply my ways. Apply my word that I've spoken from the beginning. The same word that delivered you. The same word that set you free. And you'll have peace back into your life. You'll have that joy back into your life. Amen. And you'll be where you once were. And I'll bless you even more. Amen. Come on, let's trust in him tonight. Come on, let's trust in him. Amen.